Yo guys, what is up? It is your favorite Mime Ninpango, and today I am back with another episode on Lunar Soup. Now guys, this video is going to be very different from my normal types, but it has been requested a lot by people, so uh, I am going to be doing this video, and this video is going to be how to Lunar Soup. Basically, in this video, I'm going to be giving all the new gens to Lunar Soup a sort of guide on just the etiquette and the way that the server works, and some tips and tricks to get better at the game, and just like have higher kill streaks and stuff, and uh, yeah, basically, it's just going to be how to play Lunar Soup. So if you guys are an older player, this might not be as useful to you, but it's always good to have a refresher. So sit back, get comfy, get some popcorn, and let's get into the video. So the most important thing about soup, and really any game in general, is that you need to find your own playstyle, and you need to practice it, and you need to perfect it as soon as possible. In Lunar Soup, there's a lot of different playstyles. For example, you could be someone who plays on tower and just tries to get environmental kills. You could be someone who plays really aggressive and just sticks one person until they die. Or you could play really passive and just sort of know when to back out of a fight and prioritize saving yourself over killing other people. Personally, I am a more passive player because I go for a lot of kill streaks, but I do know a lot of really good players who are very aggressive and pretty much by just sticking one person and applying a lot of pressure, they're able to secure almost any kill. And I also know some people who just one trick the tower and they get a lot of kills that way too. It's really important to define your playstyle. There are a lot of different playstyles in this game and none of them is necessarily better than the other. A lot of people would say that playing on tower is just kind of lame, but it's really up to you. Whatever you have the most fun with and whatever you get the most kills with, with, that should be your playstyle. That's why I play a little bit more passive, even though it's a little bit less fun than playing aggressive. So by now you should have a playstyle in mind, and you probably want to put it into practice. Let me help you with that. If you want to get a lot of environmental kills, the best spot for you is going to be the tower to the right of spawn. This tower is a great place to kill a lot of people with fall damage, especially if you're in a kit such as Fisherman or Melon. When you knock someone off the tower, they're going to take a lot of fall damage and probably die in one hit. However, there are some exceptions such as Barbarian and Ninja Kit, and any kit with a movement ability such as Kangaroo, Phantom, and Avatar, but you could still get a lot of kills by going up tower. If you're not going to be going for environmental kills, then you can PvP pretty much anywhere else on the map. Do keep in mind, a lot of players are going to be dropping in the front of spawn, and that's actually going to get a lot of players killed. The more experienced players know that people tend to go towards the front of spawn, so they're going to be targeting the people who drop straight out of there first. And the odds are that the older players aren't going to let you go. If they see someone who they know they can kill, they're going to go for the kill because they want the stats and they want the credits. However, there are a lot of different places that you could drop from, and you could go to other places on the map from these. For example, in the back of spawn, there's an entrance to a cave, which you can go to, and you can actually walk from the back cave to anywhere on the map. Additionally, to the side of spawn, there's an entrance into a sewerway, which can lead you to the side castle. And then you can also drop on the sides of spawn too, and you probably won't be targeted by those experienced players as well. So there's a lot of ways to avoid this, but do keep in mind that there are going to be experienced players who are going to be hunting you down. Now that you have a spot to PvP in, you should be looking at all the refill signs in your area. These refill signs are all throughout the map, and they're even in some really random and bizarre locations. But they are your friends, and you should definitely know where all of the refill stations are. If you're ever getting 2v1, these refill stations can be very useful, and if you're ever low on soup from getting a lot of kills, these are also very useful. Personally, I think the most notable refill stations are the ones straight to the back of spawn, the one by the back castle, the one by the side castle, and the one on the tower. However, there are some more niche soup signs for example, there's one in the back cave in the water, and there's one up the hill in a really random location. And then of course, there is the main one that's directly above spawn, which is more for if you're trying to run away from someone and you're up the hill. For our next step, we're going to get more into the PvP side of Lunar Soup. So obviously, this is a soup PvP server, so soup is going to be very important when it comes to fights. A lot of the times, you're going to end up losing a fight because you wasted more soups than your opponent. Other times, your opponent might just end up refilling, and then you'll lose the fight that way because they had more soup. Soup is basically the main thing when it comes to PvPing on Lunar Soup. Soup conservation is what's going to determine your entire life. So it's really important to know when to soup. Some people will soup when they're really low, some people will soup when they aren't missing that much health, and for this I go to the one tip that comes up in the Lunar Chat. Actually I think they added more tips this season, but for a long time there was literally only one tip in Lunar Soup Chat, and a lot of people thought this was redundant, but it was actually really useful. Soup heals three and a half hearts. This is important to know because if somebody's only missing like two hearts and they soup, they're going to end up wasting a soup. However, if somebody gets really low to about three hearts and then they soup, they're probably going to end up quick dropping. So the most important advice I could give when it comes to souping is try to soup when you're at half your health. Now this is a pretty general statement. There are some people who have mastered souping when they're missing exactly three and a half hearts. Personally, I'm not like that. I don't think I could ever determine when I'm going to be missing exactly three and a half hearts, especially with 
all the different durabilities and kits, but there are some people who have mastered it. But my best advice to anyone who's new to soup is to soup when you're missing half your health. Now that you know how to soup, it's really important that you learn how to manage your inventory. Some people will just spam click in their inventory, which is actually pretty bad because a lot of times it'll end up costing you a few extra soups in your hotbar. Additionally, some people take too long organizing their inventory and they'll actually get crit out and then die because of it. I suffer from this a lot because honestly my refills aren't the best. And there's a lot of different ways to organize your inventory. For example, you could go horizontally, vertically, there's some people who even do crazy shapes and like diagonal patterns. It's actually really interesting when you get deeper into that, but I won't talk about that this video. Anyways, inventory management is really important and honestly the only thing that could help you with it is just practicing it a lot. There are some people I know who have really good inventory management and they refill in the blink of an eye, so it definitely is possible. One piece of advice I can give though, and I would recommend this most especially to any new soup players, is to try quick dropping your bulls right after you soup. A lot of people do this really well and I know some people who could do it almost instantly. Personally, I'm not the best at it, but I can do it if I need to. And this is really good for inventory management because it'll free up a lot of inventory space. Do keep in mind though, if you have a perk such as refill, you probably don't want to do this strat because you'll end up losing a lot of extra soups that you could get. However, if you don't have refiller and you have a perk like relinquisher or trickster, then you could go to the refill sign and you could refill much faster than if you weren't doing this. So for the next step, we're going to be answering the most commonly asked question that I get on my channel and in game about lunar soup, which is what kit should someone buy first? And my answer is always the same. You shouldn't be buying a kit first. You should be buying one or two perks before you buy a kit. And the reason for this is because like I said in step one, you need to define your playstyle. For example, I play very passively, so I will buy the refiller perk before anything, and then after that I'll try to buy the life support perk. Now the reason why I buy life support is because if I'm about to drop, that'll save me from death a good half of the time. And refiller perk, if I get a combo on someone, I get soups back in my hotbar, and that saves me a few crucial seconds that I would have to spend refilling my soup. And if I'm low on soup, then I don't have to worry about going to a refill sign because I can just refill with my perk. For my second slot, sometimes I'll use hardline because I'm trying to make videos, and honestly I just need to record faster, and this allows me to get a nuke faster. But other times I'll use the extinguish perk because I don't want to be on fire for more than 10 seconds if I get hit into lava, because that can be a really big disadvantage. However, if I have the extinguish perk, I lose the fire and I go back to being at the same level as my opponent, and it allows me to win fights a lot more easily. Now it does make a lot of sense that somebody would rather buy a kit than a perk when they first join the server. Imagine you're a new player and you don't have the experience to know how to counter certain kits, and you keep dying to chemist, fisherman, and stomper. Your natural reaction is going to be that those kits are just better than your kit. However, stomper specifically is not a very lethal kit. If you shift, you can pretty much take no damage from the stomp and it won't end up killing you half the time. Fisherman, while it might be impossible to avoid getting sponge sometimes, there are ways to avoid it. For example, just don't fight a fisherman near the sponge. And finally, for chemist, you just always want to have your hearts above six. If you have above six hearts, a chemist cannot one-shot you. Now, a new player to soup probably won't know any of these tips, so they'll be in their kit and then they'll be like, oh, this person has speed too, they have abilities to one-shot me, their kit's just better than mine. But the reality is, you might be better at the PvP kit than any other kit, which is why there is no answer for what kit you should buy first. Personally though, if I did have to make a recommendation, I would say try to buy some of the cheaper kits and then work your way up towards the more expensive kits, because the more expensive kits do have speed too, but there are some cheaper kits that do have speed too, and there are some cheaper kits that can counter speed two kits really easily. The final thing we're going to talk about is kill streaks and the rewards that they give you. So every five kills, you will get a reward, which is usually something like an armor repair or an item that you can use to kill other players with. For example, at I believe 35 kills, you get these egg bombs, which you can drop from the sky and kill pretty much anyone who's standing in the area. Obviously, at 50 kills, you get a nuke, which eliminates pretty much everyone near you, and it's really OP. And then there's, of course, kill streak rewards like chicken copters, which can shoot eggs from the sky and you could fly on. And then there's the refill cow, which is my personal favorite. Honestly, it's really useful and pretty underrated. But there are some rewards that I I find a little bit more harmful than helpful. For example, I don't like having security guards or my attack dogs anymore. They're very useless and honestly they end up making me a bigger target than they do helping me get kills. So a lot of times when I have these I'll tell someone to kill them or I'll jump into lava so that they die with me. Now this doesn't mean that other people don't enjoy using them. I know a lot of people who are really good at PvPing with them and they'll actually end up getting way more kills because of it. Personally I don't like using those anymore. So it's really important to get as many kill streaks as you can and figure out how you can reuse each of these rewards to your advantage. And sometimes it's more important to not 
not use the rewards than to use them. But really, it just depends on what you're going for. If you want to get a high kill streak, then I would suggest practicing playing more defensive and honestly, probably not using as many of the rewards as you can. However, if you are a more aggressive player, then definitely go for it and try your best to get kills with your rewards. Well, anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I really hope that you did all enjoy and be sure to leave a like and comment if you did. If you guys want to see another video like this, be sure to let me know in the comments because there's a lot of other things that I can talk about when it comes to Lunar Soup. Also, guys, be sure to buy the perm tag on the Lunar Store. It really helps me out and it's very much appreciated if you do. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, peace out.